Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, active regulation is going to lead to institutional adoption. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? So guys, right at the top, I'm going to ask as we go through the video, if you wouldn't mind just hitting that like button down there so the algorithm will actually push this information out to as many people as possible, that would be fantastic. Well, guys, something that I think we can all agree on is this. We are, cannot wait till we get institutional adoption because it is going to cause this digital asset space to absolutely explode. And one of the things I hear a lot of people talking about looking forward to is institutional custody where we can actually go to secure platforms and stake our digital assets and receive interest payments for those deposits. But guys, it's not going to happen until we get some balanced regulation. And right now, there is a lot of talk from governments and organizations around the world with respect to this type of regulation. Now, for me, I think a big part of that is because a lot of countries around the world are getting ready to issue their central bank digital currencies. And we've recently seen the Bank of England throw out public their roadmap with respect to the issuance of their CBDC. Now, I think it's going to happen a lot faster than what's reported, but needless to say, however it pans out, regulation is something that is going to be a big, big part. Now, I want to show you this article right down here. And guys, just take a look at this title. Common sense regulation of crypto is needed to instill confidence. Guys, this is absolutely huge. Why? Because with institutional adoption, you are talking about pension investments, which is in the multi-billions, if not trillions. You're talking about custody arrangements between major financial houses. You're talking about the, the rank of the majority of people being able to have access to these platforms in a way that we have not yet seen in this space. And it's truly going to blow the doors off of what we expect to have happen. Now, just let's take a listen to this article here. The recent failures of FTX, Voyager, Celsius, and other cryptocurrencies exchanges have rocked the already fragile confidence of the crypto market. The hope that crypto can remain largely unregulated or even lightly regulated certainly end it with the X FTX flame out. Now, hey, there might have been some strategy with that. At least sometimes that's what I think. But needless to say, they want to see regulation come on board. Industry advocates, which until recently included FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried. And remember, guys, all of those political donations. This guy was out there to try and get regulation that really suited a small, small group of people. And what we're advocating for is balanced regulation have been calling for reasonable regulation of the crypto market in hopes that being part of the conversation would help achieve a more modest level of regulation. Based on articles and commentary in this publication, crypto advocates have long argued against designating the Securities and Exchange Commission as the industry's primary regulator. The dream would be an industry self-run regulated body. Well, guys, why don't we want the SEC well, number one is because majority of these secondary market sales and, uh, and of these assets are nowhere near securities. And obviously, we don't need such a heavy hand coming down. But guys, I think we need to see some sort of agency that is a part of maybe a branch of the CFTC or something like that, that actually understands this space and sees these assets for what they are, which is amazing 
technological innovation that do not fit these former molds. And this is where we got to get out in front of our legislators and our congressmen and our senators and to communicate with them about what this space really is. And they know, guys, how it's influencing the future. Don't kid yourself. But we need to get out there and advocate for fair and balanced regulation that is going to be inviting for major institutions out there. Now, just take a look right here because you're seeing a lot of governments around the world that are employing regulation. And here you have the Australian government says it's working to ensure regulation of crypto assets protects consumers. The Australian government has said it will take steps to ensure the regulation of crypto assets protecting consumers. And one of these steps will be the reforming of the licensing and custody of crypto assets. Hey guys, big deal. You're talking about institutions here. I'm certain of it. The Anthony Norman Albulance led government also said it has released a consultation paper that explores which elements of the crypto ecosystem are sufficiently regulated and which require additional atten attention. Guys, this is going to be a major, major deal. And you're seeing a lot of governments around the world talk about it. Now, just take a look right here with the UK. The UK sets out plans to regulate crypto and protect consumers. Guys, you're really talking about consumer protection here. And that is where you're going to see the institutions come in. Once that's provided, it gives them a level of security that a lot of their major investors are interested in and that's what's going to cause the adoption of this space to absolutely take off because no one's going to invest their pension funds in an unregulated and volatile market the way in which it is now. Now listen to this. The government will set out, this is the government of the UK, ambitious plans to robustly regulate crypto asset activities providing confidence and clarity to consumers and businesses alike. Consultation proposals include strengthening rules for crypto trading platforms and a robust world first regime for crypto lending. Hey, that is a massive, massive deal. We're talking about crypto lending on an institutional level. It is going to be big. Announcements delivers on financial services roadmaps by embracing technological change and innovation, delivering on the Prime Minister's plan to grow the economy. Look, the UK is setting itself out there to be a major driving force in this digital asset space. They really have come out and said they want to be leaders in it. And guys, when we're going to see this kind of innovation and regulation coming out of the UK, you can see that that is going to spill over to the rest of the Commonwealth for sure. And I, of course, with that, the rest of the G7. And I think a lot of these regulations globally are going to look very, very similar. Now, as they're pointing out here, consumer protection is a major deal. And it should be, guys. Look, we have had such a terrible um, at reputation this space with so many rug pulls and all kinds of scams going on. And of course, you have the FTXs that imploded. And of course, the Mount Goxes and the Silk Roads and all of that. And in order to get worldwide global institutional adoption Obviously, we want to show them what are the good points of this space, what the technology has to offer, what a lot of these platforms are doing in order to improve things around the world. Just take one like VeChain. I'm going to use that as an example. It's not even an ISO token. But VeChain right now is working to actually certify genuine goods. And what are they doing when they do that? They're attacking the counterfeit goods industry, which by the way, is a human um, rights nightmare when you're considering all kinds of people that are literally in indentured servitude and some of them literally been kidnapped and put into slavery in order to make these counterfeit goods. And you got VeChain out there authenticating real goods so they're, you know, counteracting this whole marketplace. On top of that, look at what, what you're seeing with 
XLM trying to go out there and bank the unbanked. And by the way, that is one killer application. And I think it's going to do tremendous things for the stellar ecosystem when they actually get out there and able to bank the unbanked and have all of those peer-to-peer -peer transactions in economies that have never had these services before. It is really going to tip the balance. And I think it's a big, big deal. Now, guys, I want to show you this right here. Here is an article talking about you know, for basically a snapshot of the 2023 crypto la regulatory landscape. And they come out with four different predictions that they're talking about. And here's the first one here. Regulators will litigate. Well, no kidding. Regulators have long litigated the bad apples in crypto. In 2022, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission sued Kim Kardashian for shilling Ethereum Max during the 2021 bull market, as well as a number of other high-profile celebrities. The Treasury Department settled with BitPay over letting people in sanctioned countries, including North Korea and Iran use its platform. And in March 2022, the, okay, the DOH, I'm thinking that's the Department of Homeland, launched a task force to enforce sanctions against Russia. Now, listen to this. A note from law firm Paul Weiss Rick. Kind, Wharton and Garrison LLP said that the U.S. government will likely continue its litigation in 2023 and that we will see additional crypto-related sanctions, guidance and enforcement actions, and designations in the near term, partly influenced by President Joe Biden's executive order on crypto from March 2022, which required federal agencies to report on the industry. The coming year will surely bring no shortage of litigation. In August of 2022, the Treasury Department added sanctions against Tornado Cash. That one has already slipped out of people's minds what they did with that one. A decentralized crypto mixing service for Ethereum. The SEC will also continue its case against XRP creator Ripple Labs whom it alleged sells XRP in unregistered security sales. Bankruptcy courts will continue to settle the matters of Three Arrows Capital, FTX, Voyager, Celsius, plus companies their collapses claim as victims. No doubt setting legal precedents for the industry. Well, I'll tell you one legal precedent that I think is going to get set. This case between the SEC and Ripple Labs, I think when we get the judgment out of this and Ripple wins this in summary judgment, it's going to be like the Howey test of 1946. And we are going to see major, major changes come about because of this decision. I think it's going to have such a long lasting impact that it will be decades to come that people will be pointing back to this case. Now, here's the second thing they're predicting. Policymakers and regulators will mull new laws. Well, that's what we're hearing about right now around the world. Preventing another FTX style collapse is at the forefront of every government body's mind. In the UK, the deputy governor of the Bank of England called on Britain to continue to bring these activities and entities within regulation. New regulation, he said, would ensure that new stablecoins meet standards equivalent to those expected of commercial bank money. In the US, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has called for customer funds to be segregated from company assets. Guys, we are going to see a lot of these normal institutional style, you know, regulations come into play. When you're dealing with your lawyer, just ask him about his trust account and see whether or not he mingles his money in with the trust account. I can tell you what, if he cares about his law license, he's not doing it. And we need to see stuff like that so that an FTX can't happen where they take 8 billion of customer funds and utilize them however they pleased. And in fact, guys, it was nothing more than a massive fraud. Now let's see another one down here. Stablecoin legislation. So the Biden administration's report on stablecoins earlier this year proposed stablecoin regulation as well as the possibility of a digital dollar. Possibility? Come on, guys. We know they're going to issue a central bank digital currency. 2023 could finally see some movement in a key stablecoin bill. Republic Rep. Patrick Henry 
one of the sponsors of the bill, which would allow the Federal Reserve to license stablecoin issuers, described it as a pretty ugly baby because of the competing disputes, chiefly about who should regulate stablecoin issuers. If it's the Federal Reserve, stablecoin issuers could borrow money from the central bank or insurance coverage from the FDIC, its wording could affect major U.S. stablecoin issuers like Circle and Paxos. And of course, Circle is USDC. And let's remember, guys, we have this whole USDT issue to deal with. And I think regulation is going to come heavy towards these stablecoins. Now, four. Europe will implement landmark crypto regulation with a catch. The European Union has charged ahead of the pack and next year will continue to push through the markets in crypto assets regulation. Law firm Aiken Gump called the legislation one of the first attempts globally at comprehensive regulation of cryptocurrency markets. The bill is wide ranging, covering money laundering, the environment, corporate reporting, and consumer protection. It would require stablecoin issuers to hold enough reserves to prevent their collapse and would require crypto miners to disclose their energy consumption. What's more, any exchanges that operate in the region will have to be monitored by a financial regulator from an EU member state. Guys, this is going to be massive. But remember, the benefits of this kind of regulation over this space is going to be so explosive that it is going to cause the adoption of this space to literally just absolutely take off and you're going to see massive price appreciation now having said that i'll say this i also believe that it's going to bring stability to these markets and these big time gains that you could see in this space probably aren't going to happen the way in which they've happened in the past why because the volatility is going to be taken out of it and the risk is going to be significantly minimized and this could be the very last bull run where we see these massive appreciations that could happen and those of us that have got in early early on are just going to be thanking our lucky stars or the blessings from heaven that we were able to actually take advantage of the prices as they are today because a day is coming guys i'm telling you what it's not going to look like this anymore and we're not going to have these massive potential opportunities and we're going to see some balanced out and more regulation and it's going to peter out where it's just like the traditional markets maybe you'll see moves of three four five percent but these hundreds and thousands of percent increases i think those days are going to be over now take a look at this right here crypto long-term adoption depends on regulation coinbase exec says and so guys you're hearing it right here you got brian armstrong coming in and basically saying hey look we need this now crypto's recent rally is a beacon of hope for the industry but its lasting presence will depend on clear regulatory guardrails according sorry tom duff gordon who is the vice president of international policy at coinbase so that's the guy who's saying it out there Joining Coindesk TV First Mover Live from the World Economic Forum at Davos in 2023, Gordon said crypto has the potential to reach mainstream adoption, but that'll depend on regulation that can then generate confidence for retailers. Now, hey, let's take a look at one of our favorite guys, Brad Garlinghouse. And what does Brad Garlinghouse have to say about Ripple CEO optimistic about U.S. regulatory clarity for crypto. Support for cryptocurrency regulation in the United States is bipartisan and bicaramel, according to Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse shared in a January 3 Twitter thread that he is cautiously optimistic about the United States gaining breakthrough regulatory clarity for the cryptocurrency industry in 2020. 2023. To mark the first day of the 118th Congress, Garlinghouse shared his hopes of 2023 being the year the U.S. gained regulatory clarity for crypto, adding that support for regulation is bipartisan and bicameral. 
Today is the first day of the 118th Congress. While prior efforts at regulatory clarity for crypto in the U.S. have stalled, I am cautiously optimistic that 2023 is the year we will finally see a breakthrough, a thread on why. Guys, we have already seen some clarity come out with that decision from the library case that secondary sales of the library token do not constitute securities. That was a major, major win for this space and especially for us as XRP holders even should Ripple lose their side of the suit if we get that kind of clarity for XRP on the secondary market, look, library took off 155% move when it got that decision. Do you think Ripple's not going to move? I think it's going to move spectacularly. But guys, either way, one of the things we all know that we need, and I know a lot of us out there are truly looking forward to, is the institutional adoption and the regulation of this space in a major fair and balanced way. And I think, guys, when we get it, it is going to be something else for all of us that got in and were the early adopters. I believe it's going to be absolutely life-changing. So guys, let me just take a few seconds to talk about our coaching program for those who don't know. Having lived through a prior bull run, I can tell you from personal experience how vitally important it's going to be for you to have your plan in place. And what our coaching program is, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one -on -one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you what our experiences were going through that last bull run and what really helped us to achieve our goals. We work together to help build your exit strategy along along with taking a look at your portfolio and making sure that it's balanced towards your goals. We can even help you get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet, along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now, the cost of that is $250, and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com and we'll get y'all booked in. So guys, this is the video I have for you today and I genuinely hope that you enjoyed it. Now I wanna invite you to join the conversation and drop your comments right down there in the comment section open it up to the community and start a discussion. Now, don't forget to hit the notification bell down there because as you know, things in this space can change on a dime. And I like to get out there and give you early warnings and plus I don't want you to miss out on our regularly released videos. Now, many of you know, I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And by the way, if you're one of the thousands of people who have been watching these videos, but you haven't yet subscribed, would you do the channel a favor and join this community? We would really love to have you on board. So in the meantime and in between time, stay safe, be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.